Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. The topic of today's video is Calculating rolling or moving averages on non-contiguous set of dates. I know this title is not very self-explanatory, so let me go ahead and show you the problem we're trying to solve. So here we have our sales, very simple report. We have sales trending from January 1 to mid-February, and we only have two products. We have product A and product B. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the running average sale amount for each product. And generally speaking, that's not a very complicated problem to solve. If I know what day I'm in, I could just go back five days, add up all of the sales for those five days, divide by five and get my rolling average. The problem is that in our case, we don't have sales on all of the dates. So as you can see for product B, we have sales starting on January 3rd, 4th and 5th. Then we have a gap for a few days and then we have another sale on January 10th. So if I just go and count back number of days, I'm going to skip some days on which I didn't have any sales. So what we want to do is write a smart calculation that will skip days where there were no sales. And it will basically go back for five days on which I did have sales, average those out and help me understand what's happening over those five days. So let's take a look at what we have here so you guys ha can have a better understanding of how this calculation work. So on day one uh, for the product on which I do have sale, um, there is no prior five days. So my running average will be exactly the same as the sales on that day. So here on that day we had $79 of sales and then my running average as expected is also 79 days. Then we're adjusting that running average over the next three days. Then we have gap, which means that if I'm trying to figure out what was my running average for the prior period, it's going to be basically the same amount as this three days. And that number is not going to change until the new cells are start coming in. And then from that point on, we will always have at least five days of sales that we can go back and average out. Okay, let's take a look at the calculation and see if it makes sense. So I've broken the calculation into two steps. The step number one is I need to figure out how to shrink my sales table or my table only to the days that do have sales in them. So let's take a look at how I achieve that. So the first thing that we do is we, we apply a filter on our sales that states that only take a look at all of the dates that had occurred either on current day or before. So that occurs in this filter selection here, or filter statement here. Let's keep peeling the onion. So now, now that we are only looking at the date range that we care about, it's still too wide. We need to filter it to the last five days in which we did have sales. So how do we do that? So the function that helps us shrink our data set to only five days is top n. So what top n does, it says, whatever table we're going to be constructing in its arguments, just take the top five records from that table. And how do I determine what's top? In my case, I'm going to have a table that will have sales date in it. So use that column, that expression for sorting purposes and sort it descending. So as you know, when you sort dates descending, you're going to get the most recent uh, records at the top. So now by using top n five, uh, I'm able to shrink my resulting data set even further to only five recent records. Okay, so let's take a look at what it is that we're shrinking. So what's happening is I want to take my sales table and I'm going to group it by my date. So basically I'm going to take and reduce my sales table to just dates and the sales amount for those dates. So now when this command runs, I just have all of my, uh, all of, I just have a table. You can logically think about that as I just have a date column and sales column in it. And sales column has the sum of all of the sales. So when this command is done, the summarize command is done, I have my entire sales shrunk to just two columns, date and sales. Again, I'm, I'm simplifying things, but you can think of it just to understand it a little bit better. So when this is done, I, I've grouped my all of my sales by date and by amount. So, so I grouped them by date and I calculated the sum of an amount for each date. And then I'm going to 
take top five by date. So I don't want to take type five by amount. I just want to take top five most recent records. So this is what this command will do. So just to summarize, filter will make sure that I only am looking at the history plus the current record. Summarize will, re will group everything by day and tell me what the sales were for each day for all of the dates that satisfy this filter condition. And then the top five function will take all of those dates and reduce it down to the five more recent days. So by the time I'm done with this whole calculation in this variable, I have a table of top five most recent sale dates with their sales values. And sales values will be in the column named sales. Now all I need to do is figure out what my running average is. As we said, we're calculating the five last days sales average, but this could be tricky. If I could just, if I just divided that number, so here I'm summing my sales for all of those five days. So if I just divided by five, this number would not be correct for the first four days because when I'm day three, and when I say day three, day in which I had sales, right? So when I'm on that day, I don't have full five days of sales yet. So I don't want to divide by five. What I want to divide is by however many records I have in that table. So if I'm on day three, I will only have three days. So I will divide that by three. If I'm on day four, I will only have four. Then I'll divide it by four. Starting from day five, you will always have five rows in that table and you'll be fine. So this is a clever trick. Uh, every time you work with averages, you gotta be very careful because you don't always know when you're doing the rolling two, three, five, whatever it is, uh, you're hoping that you're gonna have the full three, five, whatever it is you're gonna be dividing in your, uh, in your table, but you may not. So this is a clever trick to effectively ensure that you're always gonna get a, an average that makes sense. Okay, so now let's take a look at the result. As we can see, uh, when we have the hole between our transactions, the value of the rolling average would not change. And then as new data comes in, that value will start changing. So uh, we could see that behavior works true for product A, product B, and then obviously it'll be even better when we don't select anything because we don't have any gaps in our data when all products are selected. I will post this Power BI desktop file on my blog and the link to the blog and the article that describes this calculation will be in the description of this video. Hope you found this video informative and interesting and exhilarating maybe even. And please come back again soon for, for more. Thanks, bye.